just a minute, Lena. You're not getting away from this microphone that easily. Why, the boys would never settle for just one number from you. Okay. Here's another one you boys came to like. Sometimes I'm happy. Sometimes I'm blue. My disposition depends on you. I never mind the rain from the sky. As long as there's sunshine in your eyes. Sometimes I hate you. Sometimes I love you. But when I hate you, it's cause I love you. That's how I know what can I do. I'm happy when I'm with you. Sometimes I say I will, and the better I say I won't. Sometimes. contributor is a very bright young man who has climbed, climbed right up to the top of the radio heap during the past couple of years. Here he is, Jimmy Durante's sidekick and positively no relation to Umbriago, Gary Moore. <laughs> Gary, I want you to know that I listen to your program all the time. I think it's just well. In fact, it's one of the best on the air. Well, how do you like that? With all her duty, she's intelligent, too. <laughs> but thanks, Dad. At least ours is one of the few all-male shows left on the air. What do you mean? Well, look at all the women in radio today. There's one on every program. George Burns has Gracie Allen. Sibyl McGee has Molly. And even Gabriel has his heater. <laughs> <laughs> Way by golly. Well, I guess I guess the time will soon be here, Anne, when women will talk uh, will take over radio completely. But gee, there's there's one program that I hope they don't change. Which one is that? Well, one of these days you'll turn on your radio, and I'm afraid this is what you'll hear. <laughs> Mrs. District Attorney, <laughs> champion of the people, defender of the truth. And say, what a neck in a rumble seat. <laughs> At your district attorney's office, the wheels of justice are grinding in their relentless fashion. Good morning, Mrs. District Attorney. Oh, come in, Mr. Miller. Did you bring the file? Yes, Chief. Well, don't just stand there. Give me a manicure. <laughs> well, I have some important news, Chief. We just caught a crook who stole six pair of silk stockings. What news? What gold? What color? What size? <laughs> oh, never mind that small fry, Mr. Miller. I'm going after bigger games. The biggest racketeer in this town. You mean? Yes. Beautiful Dean Moore. I, <laughs> I'll go out and get him if it's the last thing I do. I wonder what racket that rat is thinking up right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's a fortune in it, a million bucks. Uh. <laughs> are, are you sure about that, Bristle Bean? <laughs> I 
I'm positive. Just as sure as your name is Harry the Brain. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that is my name, ain't it? Yes. Yeah. Look, counterfeiting is foolproof if you do it right. When we got caught with those $45 bills, it was your fault. Well, what did I do? I told you a hundred times, put on Lincoln's picture, not Superman. <laughs> but I never read Lincoln. Well, now this time, this time we can't get caught. We're going to counterfeit pennies. The whose picture is on this? Lincoln. Well, here we go again. <laughs> Listen, you're wrong, Brain. It's a perfect plan. Who suspects that we counterfeit of all things pennies? And the best part of it is each phony penny will cost us only two cents to make. <laughs> yeah, well, it costs you two cents to make a penny. That's right. Don't we lose money that way? No. We fool around with the book. <laughs> yeah. Boy, you know something? They ought to call you the brain instead of me. <laughs> I often think it's a shame your parents want the type to devour their young. <laughs> now listen. Now listen, here's the, here's the way we operate, see? Here's where we operate. We drive up to a drugstore, one of them, one of them big crowded drugstores with people rushing in and out. So no one will notice us, huh, Bristol? That's the idea. I park right outside and I keep the motor running, see? Then you dash into the drugstore. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And you weigh yourself free with a phony penny. Oh, boy! What a scheme. Yeah. That's wonderful. You know... <laughs> You can't find your place, the cops will never find us. You know something, Bristle Bean? If we and yourself are phony pennies, if we can get a B card, we can do it 50 times a day. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to put a stop to this racket, Chief. Bristle Bean's gone too far this time. I'll say he has, Mr. Miller. Why, at a conservative estimate... He and his henchmen have weighed themselves free 400,000 times. Well, can't we do anything, Chief? Oh, I've tried everything, Mr. Miller. I even disguised myself as a scale and stood in the drugstore. I'm afraid it wasn't a very good disguise, though. It must have looked more like a pinball game. What makes you think so? Well, every guy who came along tried to tilt the machine. <laughs> but I think I have an idea, Mr. Miller. And the next time Bristle B. Moore gets on a scale, he's going to get the surprise of his life. Listen, Brain, I've been looking over the books for the past week. There's something wrong, Brain. You're not getting rid of enough pennies. Well, I can't help it, Bristle B. The pennies keep coming back. They keep coming back? Yeah. I'm starting to guess my weight now. <laughs> Well, it looks like I'll have to handle the whole job myself. Give me the pennies you made last night. Yeah, here you are, Chief. My, production's way up, isn't it? <laughs> yes, the, the swing shift is doing wonders. Yes. Well, I, I'm going into that drugstore and get rid of those slugs. You wait outside here. Oh, well, there's the scale. Nobody's watching. Here goes. <laughs> well, must be out of order. <laughs> it's not out of order, Bristlebean. You weigh 162 pounds, and the jig is up. Keepers, the DA. <laughs> The D.A. is herself it. <laughs> well, I, I guess I might as well throw myself into your arms and give up. You don't have to throw yourself into my arms. Listen, don't tell me how to give up. <laughs> well, Bristlebean, are you ready to talk? Nothing, good. I ain't talking, see? How would you like a little going over with the brass knuckles? Yeah, that won't make me talk. I also carry a rubber hose. They won't let me talk either. Suppose I give you a little kiss. Settle back, this could be a long story. 